<laughs> All right, if you hear me breathing, things are good. We're two minutes away. Hey, Becky, Dwindle, Eric Pack, Loke, Caesar, Flying. It's a first, first name kind of show. Dan. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, where are you? 828? Uh, uh, um. We're on network, network time here, folks. Oh, it's just not going to work for me. I can't believe it. Let me see. Is there a... Is this plugged into anything? Does this work? No. Uh, I have to find a quickie. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host, Matt Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to Giz Fizz number you think it's a light up for me, it won't, but it is Giz Fizz 567. Ooh, look it. You can read your own post. Oh, you can read that one. Okay, so it figures that the number would, it just chimed off a minute ago um, with a dead battery. Hey, best production value. Yes, that's what we pride ourselves here. The networks look to this show and go, let's see what Dick's doing. Let's do some of that. Uh, yeah, 567. So that's, what is that? Is that possibly 10 years of good? If we did 50 shows a year? Is it 11 shows of Giz Fizz? I don't know with my voice. It does sound weird. <laughs> Goodson couldn't do any better. Uh, yeah, the execs have some notes. Oh, my God. Uh, Goodson didn't come to the studio much. Thank God. He only came to the studio like when the, a show was new. And he would come in and just have a, a, a list and go, get rid of the announcer. I don't like, don't do any more questions with the word church in them. Uh, I don't want her on the show anymore. Gene, stop fooling around. Tell the cameraman to get to you. Uh, anyway. All right, so, Giz Fizz. Going to have photos. 
provided by George Davis, interesting facts by George Davis, something new, uh, dun, dun, Dan M. has written some match game questions. Okay, is Dan in the chat room? Uh, we're going to do some of his match game questions. And we're going to do fact or crap. We're going to do a snappy answer. A snappy answer based on a cartoon that uh, Becky emailed me. I'm not going to show the cartoon because I worry about copyright, but I can describe it pretty well. And um, I think we will start. Uh -um. The George Davis Show. Exactly. All right, let's do photo. My voice does sound awful. Photo number one. Um, let's see, George. A lot of windows is how George describes this. Okay. It is two buildings facing each other with a ton of windows, and it's an atrium with a ton of windows. So George is correct. It is a lot of windows. It's an atrium, right? Courtyard, I'm glad I don't have to do the windows here. A cruise ship, window washer hell, inside out building, that's good. Uh, come and see my new hydroponic garden. This is where I fly my drone. That's good. You'll never lose it. Uh, don't throw stones, please. I'll clean floors 5 through 10. Not a place to test your rock throwing skills. How do you switch from these windows to Mac OS? Uh, God, they're going so fast. Uh, go, go to the top, turn around, and go back the way you came. Window Mania. This is Uber Eats. I got to walk up 10 flights of stairs. I told you, don't live in a glass house. 22nd century prison. <laughs> Morgan said, we're going to need more Windex. It's on the top floor. You can't miss how do I get down from the ceiling? Is this heaven? Almost looks like they're stained glass. And we'll end with, Dan, not one of these windows open. Okay, George said, for the photo with a lot of windows, my caption is, I just got a three-month part-time job cleaning these windows. I'm so happy. I'll be working this summer for sure. Okay. Let's go to photo number two. George said... Two engine aircraft. Okay, that's George's full two engine aircraft. Okay, I'll show it to you again. Secure right circle, does that say? I can't even read it. All right. It's an old timey two engine plane. Wow, someone knows what it is. An ATR-72, we got to get some bigger wings. The, you know, the wings are tiny. Who shrunk our wings? Pilot, there's a hawk on our tail. Boy, I hope the rubber band don't break. Fanciest paper airplane ever. I said bank left. Looks like Bombardier. Did George fly this plane? I don't think so. New Uber flight. <laughs> Watch me do... Oh, is it French? Dennis, is that French? Uh, this... Security... Civil security, says Dennis. Okay, so probably Canadian. Uh, who left the door open after all, the, <laughs> after all their problems? Boeing is downsizing. That's very funny, Bill. Uh, dwindle, at least it's not Boeing. Yeah, a lot of Boeing stuff going on here. The wings are too small to hold us up. Props, never again. We'll end with Morgus. The indicator says one of the wheels just fell off. <coughs> 
And George says, for the 200 aircraft, my caption is, I'm off on a one-hour flight to Phoenix to visit with my friends for a couple of weeks. Okay, let's go back to the photo full. And together, we'll move on to photo three. Let's see what George put. Oh, okay. George said, uh, George's description is Swiss style building, which is pretty accurate. Swiss style building. Uh, um, Lindy, hi. Geek wannabe, hey, hey. House in the middle, busy. I love this house, but people trying to eat it. People keep trying to eat it. This is Tudor Fascia, movie set from the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Painters charged me double. This is where Hot Cocoa Lady lives. Pre branch style tract housing. Uh, house in the middle of Europe. Gingerbread house. My Swiss chalet. Cheese factory. We only read Mother Goose here. I said, make it out of bricks, not sticks. We decorated the outside with... <laughs> That's very funny. We decorated the outside with painter's tape. Let me go back to the full thing. If you ever use painted tape, it's... Well, it's more bluey than greeny, but it could be. Could be. Uh, anyone got a pencil? I love these placemat mazes. Where's my schnitzel and beer? Pastry house. Restaurant that only serves hot chocolate. And we'll end with, ending with, instant cocoa. Oh, we'll do a Caesar. City version of Hansel and Gretel's house. City version of Hansel and Gretel's house. Okay, together we'll go on to photo four. Oh, my God. <laughs> George has a building with even more windows. What? Is that for real? I, if that is, how depressing could that be? Except maybe every cubicle has a window. I don't know what it is, folks. Do it yourself. This must be like four feet high. Yeah. Check a board for brilliant people. Do it yourself. Hypnosis. Window extravaganza, says Lindy. Window cleanest nightmare, I would bet. Window washer nightmare, yes. Wow, when none of them open, Beehive Hotel. Uh, time to get off the grid. My vision is looking at an eclipse. It looks like graph paper come to life, says Jamma B. Hey, Jamma B, hi. Uh, did I tell you where I took that job? That I don't want to... God, they're going so fast. When I took this job, I should have said I don't do windows. It's a mirror ball. Heard of a mirror ball? This is a mirror wall. Uh, checkmate. Looks like a strainer. Bill Gates home. Say it's a cheese grater. Uh, Dennis says it looks like a cheese grater. Who's in the rear window? Hoping. <laughs> D-Class says, I hope I get the curtain contract. Uh, Morgan said, good, I'm guaranteed a window seat. Caesar said, colors of the windows are a secret code. Uh, L.A. Eric said the architect was bored. Jamez, keep your owls away, please. Uh, and uh, let's see, window cleaners would not like to look at these photos. And one with pack. The question is, what's the view like? What's the view like? That was very good chat room. All right. I was so hypnotized by that photo. We have to go to photo five. It's a steamboat. Let me look at George's. Oh, George said steamboat. On Lake Geneva. That's in Switzerland, right? Oh, that's a Swiss flag at the back. Uh, okay. 
a steamboat on Lake Geneva in Switzerland. Okay. Paddle wheel rolling on the river. Call Willie. La Seuss. French, French flag. I guess it's the front. Where's Willie? Turn around. <laughs> turn around, tanks. Turn around. I forgot the anchor. Steamboat made in the style of an alligator. What a cute little dinghy. I see Steamboat Bill at the helm. I'll go back to the front, uh, to the full. Um, don't make this phone turn around because I can't. World's smallest cruise ship. Um, if you're late for the destination wedding, we're off without you. <laughs> Becky said, I see more windows. Mobile bridge, says Lindy. Ranger Rick says the boat keeps going on. Dick's green dream boat and nah, needs more engines. Um, other funnel fell off five, <laughs> five miles back. If it can open its mouth in the front and eat something, I wonder if there's gambling aboard. Where's the paddle wheel? The paddle wheel is hidden under the name of the boat, midships. Um, and we'll end with Martron. I said I wanted Swiss cheese, not Swiss cruise. All right, let's see. George says, for the steamboat on Lake Geneva, my caption is, we get a four-hour tour of, on the lake, and it's just $15 American, cheap. All right, and now six of six. Uh, um, what is this guy doing? Oh, George says, man shooting arrow. Man shooting arrow. Okay. Uh, George didn't give me a caption, but I have one. Um... Virtual arrow. I'm confident because I use sure deodorant. My dog does that when he finds a pee spot. <laughs> he points. Uh, why should an arrow? What did an arrow ever do to you? Oh, that's funny. Right on target. Wait, you're holding it the wrong way. Nice form. I can see the apple. Looks like he's already shot and lowered his bow, or his bow, rather. Uh, Robin Hood in training. Watch, he's going to tell us it was a bullseye. Auditioning for William Tell. I really appreciate it if I had an arrow. Dale Paco, that was that was my caption. I would this would be so much better if someone had given me an arrow. Uh, bullseye looks like a homemade bow. I don't even get that bow. It almost looks like it almost looks like the arrow would shoot into the ground. Doesn't doesn't look at the oh um, I think I see an arrow pointing down at the grass. It doesn't look as severe. <laughs> it's bizarre. Uh, oops, I didn't see anyone standing there. That's why he likes shopping at Target. It is pointing down. It rotates after they shoot. Bad news, I hit the groundskeeper. No one move. World's most advanced toenail clipper. <laughs> Interesting, says Pack. And we'll end with... Uh, 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 we'll end with... Interesting... Raven said he has, he just shot the arrow. Does no one see an arrow pointing down at the front of that thing? To me, it looks like there's an arrow pointing down. Anyway, uh, let's see what George said. Oh, he didn't have one. Oh, that's right. Mine was the same as whoever I met is... This form would be really great. Now, if I only had an arrow. 
All right. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, on to interesting facts. Oh, Scooter X, whoever is fast, find this word for us, okay, and put it in chat. There is a 36-letter word that describes people who fear long words. The person who coined that word has a last name with 16 letters in it. Okay, but Joy didn't put the... Is this for... Oh, everybody's writing it. Hip... Hippo... What? <laughs> Not super uh, califragilistic. Crap. Megalexophobia? Pack winds? Uh, no, not that. That's coming up a lot. Hippopotamo monstrous? No. Oh. Here we go, here we go. Dwindle. Oh, there it is. This is a, th uh, Dwindle has it. Oh, well, oh my God. This is a 36-letter word which is considered one of the longest words. Ironically, it refers to the fear of long words. This word is usually not found in dictionaries. It's like a joke. Paul says you don't need the actual word, just the threat of using it. Uh, <laughs> you people are very funny. Can't spell a phobia. <laughs> uh, that is very funny. That is very funny. All right. Uh, let's see, fact. Oh, does the sun, S-U-N, make a noise? Jamma B's in chat. He might know. Does our sun, the shining thing in the sky, make a noise? <laughs> That's my answer too, Pac. It sounds like baking cooking. That's exactly what I thought. Yes, it does, and it's very embarrassed. No, but his sister cries all day. <laughs> Paul says, there is no sound in space, only in a forest. Uh, heck yes, but no one can hear it with a can and a string. Uh, they're going so fast. Uh, uh, it's a fact. It makes a hissing sound. Yes, and it's Apollo with his chariot running around. Yes, if you put your ear up real close, his spaceman. Depends on how you define noise. I don't know, but I'm not getting close enough to find out, says Martron. Demo says, yes, it makes a noise. Steven said it does, but we can't hear it because sound doesn't travel in a vacuum. Raven said it makes a hum. Ranger Rick hisses like a snake. Jay says in space you can't hear the sun scream. Caesar sounds like sizzling eggs. All right, let's see. Uh, George says, the answer is yes, the sun makes a noise, but you can hear it. The, the noise, I guess, is made by pressure waves, but no one hears it because there's no air up there. Oh, my God. This is not a fact. This is just a fact with no guessing. Comets smell like rotten eggs, urine, burning matches, ammonia, sulfur, and hydrogen cyanide, which strangely are the same ingredients in Miss Little Debbie cake. 
All right. Um, oh, this is very funny. True or false? Or yes or no, I guess, because the answer is one of those words. Can you die laughing? Can you die? I mean, let me make you die or laughing. Can you die while you're laughing? Uh, no. Can you die? I think die laughing would be die from laughing. Yes. yes. I would think so. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Demo said, yes, I've tried it. Jamma B's done it time. many good. times. What? Happens every week about this time. <laughs> um, let's see, George. Uh, the answer is yes, mostly because you will have a heart attack. Oh, what was Lindy's? Uh, someone said, good job, Lindy. Uh, I have so many mice here running three computers. Uh, uh, uh. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, that was a yes. I go with that. That would be a good way to go, I tell you. Um, because so many birds were being killed by wind turbines, they painted them using what color? Because so many birds were killed by wind turbines, they are painting them now with what color? Interesting. Jamma B said 60 times more birds are killed. Oh, 60 percent more birds are killed by building. As many birds as killed. Wow. Um, we have one right answer up there. One correct answer. Um, Becky has half an answer right. All right. The blacks have it. All right. Because uh, windmills were white, uh, wind turbines were white. By using the color black, it has cut bird kill by 70%. By painting the turbine blades black has reduced bird kill by 70%. Uh, George ends with, hey, everybody, thanks again. You did your job excellently. I'll see you next time, my friends. Toodaloo, <laughs> George. George, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was great. Uh, um, we're going to do some logo. Mm-mm-mm. Well, if prepare for almost 100%. Footwear brand that begins with a warning word when you're cutting a tree. Don't say it. Footwear brand that begins with the word used when you're cutting... Yeah. Um, yeah. Land, land, not lakes. Timberland. Um, oh, name two of the three Microsoft Office applications that was in the original, the first version of Microsoft. Two of the three Office apps. That was in the very first. Uh, oh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys are good. 
You guys are good. Pack at all three. <laughs> uh, that was very good chat room. It was. It is indeed Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So, mad, uh, mad, mad was on 60 Minutes back in, I think, 1988. And uh, CBS took it down, but now it's back online, okay? Um, I'm on it. There are five of us from mad on it. And it came about when mad came out with the Mad Magazine game, okay? And it was a satire on Monopoly. And it was very funny. It was great because uh, Parker Brothers came up to Mad and Bill asked me to sit in on the meeting and they were just there to ask, was Mad interested in partnering on a game? And, and Bill said, look, I'll be t uh, honest with you. I don't want you to come back with me with a game you developed and was a big flop, and now you want to put it out and say it's the mad game. He said, I don't want that. He said, you come back with a game that has a mad element to it, and then I'm, I'm very interested. So six weeks later, they came back with the Mad Magazine game, and if you've never seen it, it's great. It's a, it's a takeoff on Monopoly, except the winner is the first person who can go bankrupt. And it's kind of fun to play it because <laughs> every time you press something, you say, and you passed uh, this, and now you get a $5,000 bonus, and you go, oh, no, not another $5,000 I have to get rid of. Anyway, a couple of years after this, and, and I went on, on the road for it with, uh, and Parker Brothers provided a person to go with me who set up all the interviews and everything. And a couple of years after the uh, Parker Brothers thing, Roy Brunette was his name, called me. He said, guess, guess what I do? I said, what? He said, I have a new job. I'm in charge of PR for 60 Minutes. I said, oh, my God, Roy, you have to get 60 minutes. I have to get uh, mad on 60 minutes. And he goes, pitch some ideas. So I pitched weird stuff like Mad's 33rd and the 3rd birthday because that would be Mad-like to celebrate that. And nothing, more than a year went by pitching stuff. And finally I said, I said, Roy, it's going to be Mad's 35th anniversary. There's no trick to this there's no nothing it's just 35 years without advertising and he goes oh, I'll ask them he calls back and he goes they're interested anyway they came up and they recorded the 60 minutes thing and then they called Bill and told him that they liked it so much they were holding it for the summer and would use it for a fall premiere. So Bill calls me in and explains this to me. He says, what do you think that means? I said, it means one of two things. They really love it, and they're holding it for a fall premiere, or they hate it, and they hope by September you will have forgotten that we even did it, and they'll never show it. Uh, so come the fall, they showed it. And Bill got like 80,000 subscriptions. And he called me and he said, this is the best thing that ever happened to Mad. He said, I want to buy you something special. And I said, are you serious? He said, yes, this is incredible. I said, okay, I want a boat. And he goes, how much is a boat? I said, $30,000. He said, think smaller. I said, I said, are you serious about this? And he says, yes. I said, I want a computer. And he said, what does that cost? And I said, Bill, uh, a, a, a decent computer is like $3,500 to $4,000. And he said, well, go buy one. And he said, make it nice, and you can go as high as $5,000. So anyway, I bought a neck. 
and I got wor- Do you know how much word? Uh, let's let's play a game. So I bought the computer. Guess how much Word cost? All right, this is probably the first version of Word. Um, Seven hundred. Five hundred. Well, a lot of you are pretty close. Jim would be is very close. Yeah, six hundred fifty dollars. I said, you know, I need. I'm a writer. I need. He said, oh yeah, words great. Six hundred fifty dollars. So what did I know? So I bought it. It was the most ridiculous. <laughs> I'm writing a mad script. You hit save. You it didn't you couldn't save it. There were who in the corporation should have access to this file? There were pages, freaking pages of I I I went out and I bought something for a hundred bucks. I forgot what it was. Word right or something. Uh because it was the stupidest. Microsoft was anyway. All right, sorry about that, but mm-mm-mm. oh, Wonder Bread has balloons of what three colors? You don't don't say it then. I know, but I don't know the exact three colors. Uh, I know two of them. Wonder Bread has balloons. Oh, okay. Okay. See, now, Jamma B, Jamma B, if you really were a techno whiz, which you claim to be, you would find a way (laughs) to be able to put a picture of Wonder Bread on my feed. Think about that, Jamma B. They still make Wonder Bread. They, uh, they They do. Yeah. Um. Oh, the name of the name of the product that is chocolate covered raisins. These are so easy. The name of the product that is chocolate covered raisins. Okay. It is indeed raisinets. Uh, uh, um. Let's see where we are. Okay, we'll do one more. That was those were easy. Maybe this will be harder. Uh, uh, about fruit. Maybe. I don't know how healthy the chat room is. Oh, a range of fruit drinks that is the same. Well, this is stupid. A range of fruit drinks that is the same as a person with no clothes. (laughs) Yeah, naked juices. Very good. Naked juices, okay. Oh, the oldest gum in the Wrigley line of gum. The oldest. I guess it would be the same as the first. The gum that is the oldest in the Wrigley brand family. Spearmint, Juicy Fruit, Double Mint. No, I think Doublemint came after because I remember the Doublemint twins. They used to always have car cards and subways. With the yeah. Uh, it is... <laughs> Do you see for it was my drag name? Um... <laughs> uh, Becky, Becky has it along with many others. Juicy fruit. Oh my God. 
These are so easy. What technology company is headquartered in Cupertino, California? What tech company is headquartered in Cappuccino, California? Cappuccino? No, Cup. Cappuccino. Oh, Spaceman thinks they stopped making juicy fruit. It is indeed Apple. And finally... Which chewy fruit snack unrolls and can and is about a foot long, uh, about a yard long? Which chewy fruit snack unrolls and is about a yard long? You know, it's very funny because... Uh, you know, it's not. I, th- I, I, what they have on the card here. Oh. Oh my god! Oh my god! What? No one had it, and now three people have it, and I never heard of it. It is called fruit by the foot. Fruit by the foot. Sometimes where you live, they change their names in California yeah. and New York. Yeah, but four, four people already had it. That's great. That's great. All right, we're going to do one of those things they never taught you in school. Uh, um, Gemma B., I always keep fruit by my feet. All right. On the Nobel Peace Prize medal are the three naked women resting their arms on each other's shoulders. Then let's get the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> oh, we we went to Lindy. That's right. I yeah. The the one day I lend out my Nobel Peace Prize. And now there's a question about it. On the Nobel Peace Prize medal are three naked women resting their arms on each other's shoulders. Yeah, I know. That's it. The voices. The what? The and Martha. What? The good voices. <laughs> On the Nobel Peace Prize, are three naked women resting their arms on each other's shoulders? Probably the muses. Oh, the point is just this. Crap, they're grabbing each other. False is the Peace Prize. There were no arms involved. Uh, No, they're playing polka. I know this question is ridiculous. Oh, no, it's three naked men oh. resting their arms on each other's shoulders. None of you have Nobel Peace Prizes? Chat room, I'm shocked. I'm shocked, do you hear me? Liberty, Egalite, and Fraternity. If you have a shoe size of 43 in Europe... Well, who's going to know this? What is your United States shoe size? If you have a size shoe of 43 in Europe, wow, people have like sensible answers. What is your United States shoe size? Uh... 
I have no idea. I'm going to go with something common. I'll say ten and a half. All right, ready? If you have a shoe size of 43 in Europe, in the United States, your shoe size is, I'm close, 10. Stephen, Stephen. Oh, Stephen hit it. Marchand and I said 10 and a half. 10 is it. Very good. Uh, uh, um. oh, who in the chat room can answer this? What is McDonald's called in Chinese? <laughs> Unless it's McDonald's. What is McDonald's called in Chinese? McDonald's? Mickey D? <laughs> Junk food? Big Clown Burger, McDonald, Wangs, <laughs> Wiki Donald's, disgusting. What is McDonald's called in Chinese? Made D'Angelo. Made D'Angelo, that's what it says. M A I D A N G L A O. Oh, there was a pun earlier. Uh, why should you never iron a four-leaf clover? Chad, you guys are very good at puns. Why should you never iron a four-leaf clover? It's very funny to my mind. No. No, you should never press your luck. <laughs> That's very clever. That's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> I have to remember that one. Yeah. Oh, I know this. What was New York called in the mid-1600s? Maybe I don't know this. What was New York called in the mid-1600s? I, I think it's New Amsterdam, too, but was that early? I think that was later New Amsterdam. Uh, that, I think yeah. New Amsterdam was later, too. Boy, everybody knows yeah. if they're right. Might have been Jeeves, too. <laughs> I think they called it Phoenix. Uh, what was New York called in the mid-1600s? Oh, New Amsterdam. It was. It, it was. Okay. Mm -mm. All right, we're going to do a, oh, we did that, uh, we did that. All right, so, oh, you know, I'm going to do a little video that seems to be, um, people seem to like it, so, um, where the heck did I put it? Uh, uh, um, it'll be a series if you like it. <laughs> oh, boo, boo, boo. Um, mm -mm, mm -mm. Perhaps you heard of the match game, okay? A lot of people don't know the beginning of the match game, okay? This was sent in by a fan. Now, I've blown it up a bit. It was kind of blurry to begin with. It was probably from, it was obviously taken from a TV set. But this is the earliest match game, okay? So notice the set. It's two celebrities and four contestants. The celebrities were sitting in the middle here. This That's Peggy Cass, even though it's blurry. I know it's Peggy. Gene there. And I can't read the name, but that celebrity's leaning way back, so you can't quite see him. And I don't know where they got the typeface for the crawl, but... Uh, a fan sent it in and said, oh, your name just appeared on television. Uh, but I have another shot here that is probably a little bit better. Okay. And this is what changed. Uh, somewhere along the line, the two celebrity team captains were next to each other instead of the center of each team. 
this is just a rehearsal. That's me. That doing way, Gene rehearsal. could stand between the uh, two celebrities. One day, Gene, I think his uh, Helen came up, uh, Gene's wife, and and Gene said, "You know, I want to have a lunch with Helen. Can you just do the rehearsal?" Um, I said, "Yeah, it'd be great fun." So later, <laughs> I, I said, "Gene, that was great fun," and he said, "Oh, would you like to do it all the time?" And I said, "That'd be yeah." He said, well, let's go to Gene Kobelman. So we went up, Gene Kobelman was producing. Uh, and Rayburn said, you know what? I'd rather have a complete lunch hour and Dick's going to do the rehearsal. And Gene said, that's fine. If he wants to, that's fine. Um, so I did that for a couple of years. Okay. And then everything called Dick's Gadget Warehouse. You know, I do a show called The Giz Whiz and I have tons of gadgets and a lot of gadgets are so unique, I can't throw them away. So I put them in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. And when I was there recently, I found the DDB Match Game in shorthand. Okay. And I thought, if you like backstage stories, and I'll tell you about writing match game questions I wrote them at restaurants, mainly eating by myself. His, his match game questions on a napkin, okay? Um, so I could read some of these questions, tell you how they changed over the years, but I don't want to bore you to tears. So if you like this idea, uh, just give this a like, a, uh, a thumbs up, and say, do more, okay? Or say, we've had it up to blank. Um, it's a gold mine. Uh, it's so funny. Because I keep keep waiting for Jammer B to cut back to my camera. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, the emails are great about it. It says, you want to do more? Okay. <laughs> Knock yourself out. It's that kind of stuff that really spurs me on to, uh, I'll do some more. All right, so now, wow, 920. All right, we're going to do a snappy answer, okay? Uh, so Becky sent me a very funny cartoon. It's a movie house. There is only one person, okay? I guess they're waiting for the movie to start or it's an off day or a terrible movie. One man is sitting dead center all the way toward the back of the movie house, and he's reading the paper, I guess waiting for something to happen. And there's a lady standing next to him saying, is that seat taken? And you say, this is your chance to come up with a snappy reply. You're alone in a theater, 500 empty seats, and a woman says to you, is that seat taken? Pointing to the seat right next to yours. And you say... No, it's still right there. Oh, that's funny. That's good. Yes, Claude Rains is sitting there. No, <laughs> no, come sit on my lap. Yes, all these seats are taken by my invisible friends. Oh, no one said mine yet. Yes, my invisible friend is sitting here. No, but you don't like the smell. No, Paul Rubens just left from it. No, nobody took it. Yes, can you see my friend Casper? Yes, my invisible friend is here. No, it isn't engaged or married. Invisible man. Yes, Harvey. There you go, Becky. That Yes, that was my answer. Don't you see Harvey sitting there? Yes, they're all taken by the living. We're dead. <laughs> That's good. I don't know. I'll have to ask my coat. <laughs> That's very funny, Lindy. It's very funny. Ranger, um, another uh, Ranger Rick, another Casper Ghost. Uh, Magoo says, yes, I reserved them all. Taken? Are you dumb? Uh, no, but I like sitting alone. No, the leper that was sitting here just left. That's excellent, Travis. Uh, yes, it's a packed house. All the people sitting here are, in go are ghosts. Yes, and the movie is Ghostbusters. No, but you'll get poked by the springs if you sit on it. That's great, Jamma B. Uh, yes, I'm saving them for five. <laughs> Hundred of my friends. 
Tombow. Yes, but I'll, I'll sell it to you anyway. These are great. Mr. David's right. These answers are gold. Yes, I paid for all these seats. Yes, they're reserved. Dwindle, brace the chain with go away creep. No, but let's just pretend they are, says Paul. And we'll end with one more <clears throat> pretty soon because I'm taking it home with me. Uh, that's very funny. And I told Becky, I said, Becky, that's very funny. Uh, but uh, I also lived that because I was on a train and fairly empty train and a woman comes in and sits down right next to me. And about a minute later, she looks down and said, I think you're over the, you're part of the chair a little bit. So I said, have the whole thing. And I just got up. And Dennis had one better. Dennis, <laughs> Dennis is also on a fairly empty train, sitting next to a man. And did the woman want to sit between well, first, you? The train was crowded. Then it emptied out and it was just he and me and the guy. And a woman came in and said, she could, hello. She said, like she, I forgot what she said, but she wanted to sit between us. <laughs> What's it, yeah. So the woman came in and said, uh, can I sit between you two? Maybe she wanted, maybe she was a, a fearful and she thought if I sit between two men, anyway. Uh, on the subway. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, it's time for match game. Oh, she said, "Do you mind?" And oh, do you <laughs> mind? <laughs> she 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 pointed between them. She said, "Do you mind?" Like <laughs> they should move somewhere else. So, um, okay, so we're gonna do some match game. Oh, Dan is Dan. Dan, I won't say your last name in case you don't want it. Dan M. Dan, are you here in chat? Oh, okay. Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan Dooku. Uh, uh, um. So I gave it a shot. You asked for match game questions. Um, and. Uh, um, okay, let's uh, do, I just rearranged some of the words, that's all. Uh, I just saw the worst remake of The Godfather ever. Instead of a horse's head in bed, there was the head of blank. Or there was a head of blank. Worst remake of The Godfather ever. Instead of the head of a horse, in bed was... Head of a lot of matches, a lot of matches. A rival crime boss stayed. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, Godmother. No. Did you have an answer, Dennis? Yeah, I had no matches at all. Oh, a Medusa. Dennis, where's your buzzer? Dennis said Medusa. But I am in with the, the I had a lettuce. Thank you. Head of lettuce. Thank you. Okay. Oh, give me one of those pieces of paper. Um, dumb door is so dumb. How dumb was she? The doctor said she had a lazy eye, so dumb door got a blank for it. The doctor told dumb door she had a lazy eye, and dumb door said, "Oh." A lazy eye. I'll get a blank for it. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see if we match. Oh, why should, should see Dan's uh, Dan's answer? Um, treadmill. Oh, a tra oh, you're going in. Oh, a recliner. Okay, lumpy. We don't match, but we're going in that direction. You can sort of go in two ways. A vitamin injection. A couch, treadmill, okay, doctor said she had a lazy eye and dumb door got a blank for it, well I'm going to, being the judge, I'm going to match hammock with couch. 
Okay, and Dennis, for a lazy eye. Oh, yeah, you can get a match, too. She bought it at a lounge. Someone said, you got it. Uh, Chumley, lazy boy, that's a match. That's a match. So, Dan, you're doing very well here. Uh, uh, um, oh, Dumb Door was so dumb. I don't wish you. At Thanksgiving, instead of stuffing the turkey, she stuffed blank. Dumb Door was so dumb. At Thanksgiving, instead of stuffing the turkey, she stuffed blank. This is very hard. Um, she's so dumb. Instead of stuffing the turkey, she stuffed. Oh, okay. It's kind of a play on words. Uh, uh, um. Let me see what we have here. A wild bikini, her mouth, her dishwasher, her bra, her pumpkin, her husband, the cranberry sauce. Um, all right, I got some matches. She stuffed herself. <laughs> and Dennis said, instead of a turkey, she That's stuffed... It. Oh, she, she stuffed a cabbage. Okay. Dan, this was great. Uh, um, oh, nearsighted Ned walked into an office and said, do you think I need glasses? And the clerk said, you sure do. This is the blank. Nearsighted Ned walked into an office and said, do you think I need glasses? And the clerk said, you sure do. This is the blank. Um, do you think I need glasses? Yes, this is the... Mm -mm -mm. All right. I don't know. It's going to be hard to match, I think. Oh, that's very good. I wish I'd put that. Oh. Originally, I thought funeral home, and I didn't put it, and I don't think I got one match. Uh, let me see. Monogram mortuary veterinarian. <laughs> this is the Oval Office. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, blood Bank. Oh, boo. I don't think I, I didn't get one match. Of course, you need glasses. This is the DMV. Oh, did Dennis take his? This buzzer with oh I have it. Uh, drugstore police station. Oh, you said DMV, Duck Eric Duckman. Oh, yay! Okay, hang on, hang on. It takes so little to please us, doesn't it? Um, let's see. We need one more. Uh, uh, um. Uh, let's try this. Ra uh, Rodney Rotten is so rotten. How rotten is he? He opened a bakery. His best-selling item is the black and blank cookie. Rodney Rotten is so rotten. He opened a bakery. His best-selling item is the black and blank cookie. I can only think of one answer. So I think we will have... A lot of matches. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, um. Dennis, you can just uh, say it out loud. Uh, uh, Rodney Rotten was so rotten. How rotten was he? He opened a bakery, and his best-selling item was a black and blank cookie. Black, black and blue. Black and blue. Uh, let's see what we have here. Black and Decker. 
<laughs> black and blue, black moldy, overcomalized, black and booger. Oh my God, blue, black and decker. Oh, a lot of black, black and stinky, black and moldy. Um, Dan, thank you so much. This was great. This was great. Anytime anybody wants to write some match game questions, uh, just email and send them on to me. Um, mail at gizwishow.com. Mail at gizwishow.com. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to say hi to... Uh, um, you know, let's do the hand. Um, put it in your hand. Put some in your hand. Uh, uh, um, and we're going up. All right, it's only in one hand. No. <laughs> Charlie, no, Charlie, no, go back. It's in one of those hands. This is ridiculous, Charlie. What kind of a show dog are you? He said, oh, oh. That's it, he says. Look at that tail. So wags a lot. We had a... I got it this time. Oh, right. We were walking in the park. And uh, a guy walking behind us, we sat, uh, sat on a bench for a minute, and the guy behind us said, that is the happiest doggy I have ever seen. He wags his tail at everything. And we said, well, that's so wags a lot. Yeah, that's so wags a lot. Charlie. Charlie. So Charlie, Charlie has to wait probably at least six weeks before he can get a grooming. Uh, the vet said, wait until his hair fully grows over where the stitches were and the scabs have to fall away on their own. But, okay, Charlie. <laughs> All right, say goodbye to the chat room, Charlie. He said, I can't. I'm busy eating, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, Charlie, Charlie is just... Uh, He's just great. He's just great. He brings joy. He loves to kiss doggies. He's just, and he loves women. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, he looks good with long hair, too. We think so, too. Also, what is with this being the first full day of spring? It was 37 this morning. It was, it finally hit 47 during the day. And tomorrow is going to be about the same. And Friday the same. It's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, then and now get out, get your credits ready, okay, ladies and gentlemen. This has been regular, old-fashioned, totally unimproved Giz Fizz. It's a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Dennis Wonderlin, Charlie the Dog, um, Scooter X. Becky, Ranger Rick, Jammer B, I hope I don't forget anybody, Twindle, but your own credits are coming up, hang on, Lindy Dunn, exactly, what I have to cut to the full chat room, oh, where's my chat room, oh, the music stops, I forgot about that, okay, um, there we go, Worst Boy, Spaceman, Pac NW, D Claire, Dan Dooku, Vicky, hey Vicky, she wants more. Match game. Director of Insanity, Morgus, Giz One, Geek Wannabe, Trex TX. I don't, uh, we have to. Yeah, yeah, Charlie Groomer. All right, chat room. I'm going to go into the fade out. Don't forget tomorrow. Go back to my camera. Uh, uh, um. Oh, the same guy's back. Isn't it? That's good. Uh, Giz, Wiz, Giz Wiz tomorrow. Sunday I'm on with, uh, 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 I guess it's like a Sunday. Whoever it is, I'll be on After Tech Guys next Wednesday night for this and next Thursday for another Giz Fizz. I'll see you all next week. Thanks, Dwindle, for the help. Thanks, Chad, for getting this on. And bye, everybody. It is great fun. You people are very original and very funny.